I'm Nico Tamari and joined as always by Matt Hosworth and Matt. We said it last week preparing for Western Michigan and now we're saying it after that was a win that absolutely, yeah. you know, you may scoff a bit if you're watching this. Oh, they saved the season in game four. But yeah. if you lose that game, you're one mm -hmm. and three, two and three, really heading into the bye week and NC State and all that. You said it. They had to have it. And when Western Michigan closed that to a five point gap, they showed real fortitude and they got that win. They found a way. Yeah, Western Michigan pushed them and Syracuse pushed right back. That was good to see because it was hot in there. You know, players were cramping and, you know, unfortunately some of the Western Michigan players were out of the game, left the game because they were either hurt or cramping. That obviously helped a little bit in Syracuse's favor. But let's be honest, that Syracuse offense finally started to click and that's what we needed to see. The defense still got some takeaways and they got timely stops. I know they still gave up a lot of points, a lot of yards. But those stops came at huge points in the game. I think as they go forward in the season, you hit on some awesome points that people will look back at that game and say, number one, that's when we saw really Tommy DeVito come out of his shell. Mm -hmm. Not just throwing, only eight incompletions, which is crazy, four touchdown passes. But he ran for 100 yards. Now it's technically 85 because he got sacked. But he ran for over 100 yards, which is awesome. Yep. And we haven't seen that yet. Not to mention the defense. There was that third and one Western Michigan. They initially got the first down. They yeah. reviewed it brought it back, and that meant on third and one and fourth and one, Stop. Syracuse stopped them. And, I mean, those are the kinds of plays mm -hmm. that are turning points in seasons. Oh, it's a huge thing. I mean, they had to have it, and, uh, you know, they get this win, and now you look ahead. I mean, Holy Cross, that should be a very sure. easy win. Uh, I'm not saying you don't take any college football team lightly, but still, I mean, that should be a win, whichever way you cut it. Then a bye week, and then it's time to, to get ready for that ACC schedule. Uh, but as Dino Babers was saying in his press conference on Monday, Never get too high when you beat a team like Western Michigan. You never get too low when you lose a game that you probably should have lost against the number one team in the country in the Clemson Tigers. So got to stay even keeled and, uh, you know, the rest, uh, the rest will take care of itself. You know, one thing you talked about, too, and, and you mentioned it as well, the takeaways. I mean, the, the, one of the longest streets in college football, third longest, in fact, and there were some great ones. You know, FM alum Eric Coley <laughs> with the pick, but I, my yep. favorite – my favorite was the strip sack by Alton Robinson oh. and his partner in crime, Kendall Coleman, recovers it, of course. <laughs> that was a thing of beauty. Just looking back at your highlight of it, and I, <laughs> I, was, I was like watching it frame by frame, and just the way he was able to get around his, his, the, you know, his, the offensive lineman blocking him and then just slap it right out of his hand. The guys pounced on it, and that's what you want to see. That defensive line, I mean, let's be honest, we didn't hear much of them aside from the Liberty game. We thought this was going to be a strength of the team, but that Maryland game, they were nowhere to be found. The Clemson game, nowhere to be found. And then Western Michigan, they resurfaced again. That was good to see because Alton Robinson needs to be a menace on that line for the Syracuse team to start clicking again. And, and that's just it as well. They need them. And, of course, they need to be playing that way when you get on the other side of the bye week, NC State, Pitt, Florida State. Oh. Exactly. Uh, obviously, there were injury updates as well. You know, we saw Ify Malafonwu wasn't playing. Andre Sisco didn't play. McKinley Williams saying out. What did Dino say about that? Yeah, so those two guys, uh, Andre Sisco, Ify Malafonwu, um, didn't really give us an update if we'll see them against Holy Cross. I know you and I did some talking in the sports office. We probably won't see them. They probably shouldn't <laughs> play in that game. Yeah, they probably shouldn't play in that game. Uh, I, I'd like to see Eric Coley get a full game right. at safety. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and then in terms of McKinley Williams, this is a guy that was supposed to be a day one starter at nose tackle on that defensive line. Uh, he had a foot injury in August, didn't play really this whole month uh, since early August. And uh, Dino Baber says he hopes to see him ready by the time that NC State game rolls around. That's going to be a huge shot in the arm for that SU defensive line. Definitely. And I'll say this, Syracuse 37-point favorite against Holy Cross. <laughs> so it's, they're, they're, you don't want to say obviously going to win. They're most likely going yeah. to win. But the things you have to look for in that game, not just total domination, mm -hmm. but I'd like to see everything progress. You'd like to see it be over early. You'd like to see the offense clicking so much that maybe Tommy doesn't come out after the first drive of the third quarter. That's like the courtesy yeah. thing. <laughs> and hopefully we see more of Eric Coley, more of Alan Stritzinger. Yeah. And that's just it, more depth. And we yeah. certainly saw that against Western Michigan. What are you looking for in this one? Yeah, I think I think if you could get Tommy DeVito out of this game by halftime, that's a win. Um, in a good way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Did. Hopefully up 37 to nothing yes. at that point at the half, but uh, you know that would be that would be a good thing, um, especially you know for health. You want to you want to go into this game the same way you come out. You want to be healthy. That's what Dino was saying on Monday. Um, you know Clayton Welch. We don't really know what we have in this guy. I know he's a senior. He doesn't have much time left here in Orange anyway. But still, let's see what he what he's got out there on the field. This is a game where you you, you do the final tune-ups here before 
the meat of this ACC schedule begins, and it's it's going to start with a bang on the road in a place Syracuse hasn't had a whole lot of success in Raleigh, no. North Carolina. Yeah, and that's just it. When Matt's talking about NC State, that is the game yeah. after the bye. Thankfully, yeah. for Syracuse fans, it's not a full two weeks because it's a Thursday night game yeah. down at Carter-Finley Stadium, but that is the game on the other side of the bye week, and then it's a Friday game against Pitt here in the Dome, and then we're talking about <laughs> the Florida States, the Dukes oh, of the world, yeah. and that is... You want to say that's when things get real because Clemson and Maryland were pretty real, uh, but that is those are the games you got to win. That'll determine not just if I mean you know what kind of bowl you get as well. So that'll be fun to see yeah. on the other side. So for Matt Hallsworth, I'm Nico Tamari, and obviously we'll keep you posted as the week goes on. And don't forget about the Orange Zone Thursday night at seven on NBC Three.